Hey, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. It's been a little while since I put out a video on Old Bertha here. Um, you know, our lathe cleanup. I don't want to call it a restore because it's not really a restore, but the lathe cleanup and hopefully uh, can get it to a point where I can make some chips with it. But uh, in this video, I'm going to come back to the uh, change gear, I'm sorry, the lead screw direction change gearbox. Okay, for lack of a better word, so it's over to the left by the head. Have it all disassembled here, and uh, a couple things that I want to point out is, if you recall, it had two fiber washers with it. There was this thicker one, right, that went with the um, the gear that uh, the idle gear that went up the center, right here, okay, and um, and then there was a smaller, thinner fiber washer that um, you know was broke. So I was looking for um, fiber washers for those. So I found those, uh, Clausing carries those washers. Uh, they're not very expensive. They were, I think, uh, two or three dollars a piece, okay? Uh, so that's what I have here. Uh, I have the washers from Clausing. Uh, a couple of things that I want to mention though is that uh, even though the dang things were two and three dollars a piece, uh, when I called them up, you know, um, they said, well, first of all, uh, the one washer, and, and I'll hold this up and maybe we can maybe this will show up I don't know the one washer that goes toward the uh, headstock you know uh, sp spindle that holds the the, the the lead screw gear this one here 9-53 they had in stock when I ask about 9-51 they told me that uh, that has been replaced by two 9-51 A's okay just so that you know if, in case you're curious and you have the same parts diagrams that I do that you probably got from the Atlas Craftsman Group or or VintageMachinery.org or one of those places. 9-51 uh, has been replaced with two 9-51.A's or dash A's. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, the other thing here, when I called them up and uh, I ordered these, said, "Well, hey, how, how much are these?" They said, "Well, you know, one was two dollars and." I think the other one was four dollars, so or whatever. It wasn't much money, right? But you know, um, I said, okay, well, will you email me how much your, how much this bill is going to be? Oh yeah, we'll do that. But you know, I never got an email, so maybe it was just a fluke. Maybe Clousing doesn't work that way. But now, when I got charged, uh, it was over twenty dollars in freaking shipping, right? See that twenty dollars. You know, I, I'm a tightwad, but come on. Really? 20 bucks? Okay, but anyway, I'll, I, I digress. So anyway, we have the uh, fiber washers for the uh, gearbox. And then uh, the other thing I want to talk about the gearbox here for just a minute is, uh, if you recall in the last video, I said the bushing here on the end uh, was wallowed out pretty bad. So I, had a, uh, I called Clousing about this bushing. This bushing is not replaceable. That's not a replaceable part from Clousing. You actually have to buy the whole whole gearbox assembly, and that's 75 bucks, right? So um, I, uh, my, my friend Gary Johnson, who's a machinist, was kind enough to take this, and he put this on the mill, and he bored the old bushing out, made a new bushing, pressed it back in, drilled the hole. I don't know if you can see that. Drilled the hole for the oil port. Also cut the oil groove. And then down here, there was a shallow groove in the bottom for the oil to hit the bottom of the lead screw. I think he just done that with the drum oil, so that was probably the easiest way for him to do that. So anyway, we got new bushing. So new bushing, uh, new um, fiber washers. So I think we're ready to put it back together. Uh, is there wear? Yes, there's uh, There's still plenty of wear on this thing, um, but I think it's going to be good enough for, for what I need to do. So let's talk about assembly uh, here. And um, what's required? So you know what? Actually, I'm looking for my oil can, and I can't find it. So let me uh, let me pause this, and we'll come back, and and uh, we'll 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 go when I have some oil to put it together. So be right back. Okay, so I have my oil can, and uh, let's start putting this back together. So um, having the housing here, hopefully, there's you can see this all right. We're going to start with this shaft here. The shaft has a bevel gear. Something I didn't point out uh, last time is that this is actually pinned to 
this shaft here so i guess you could drive that pin out and replace this if you know as a unit and this part would stay so this part here um goes toward the toward the headstock this is where our uh, lead screw gear is going to go and the spacer and the shim and all that sort of stuff so we're going to get a little oil on this maybe if i don't make a huge mess here oh there we go let's uh let's oil that up and get that slides right in here oh almost forgot what do you think of that Going to have to have the replacement fiber washer here, and it was the 9-53. Get it out of the bag here. All right. So we'll slide that washer on there. We've given a coat of oil. Tell you what, we're going to put a little squirt here on this bearing here and rub that around. Okay, and then that comes in right like that. Okay, so the next part to go in is the bevel gear down here. And recall that um, this one kind of went together a little weird. You actually have to kind of get the bevel gear in place um, with the washer, and then there's this bolt here that slides down into it. So let's uh, let's get a little oil on this surface here, oh, here, all right. And of course, we're going to need our other two washers and remember I, call, I said that these were replaced with two 951A's these are in fact thinner uh, than the original one and uh, they don't have the little notches so does that matter well I don't know alright so these are gonna sit on here like this and they're just gonna slide down in here and lock in with this bevel and then, of course we have this pen Get some earl on that. And get that in here. Alright, just like that. And then on the back side is an 11 16 nut. And uh, there's a, there's a uh, top and bottom that has a machine nut. That really looks like a jam nut to me because it's so um, thin. And uh, Tighten this up, and of course, I'm gonna hold a screwdriver back here. And snug that up. All right. So at this point, those are together. I like that. Okay. Remember the other bevel gear, um, goes onto the uh, lead screw and remember it just sets in here and we're not going to install it because we don't need that right away so now let's talk about this detent fork this uh this fork uh holds uh, the spider gear shifts it left and right remember this is what drives actually drives the lead screw the direction this spin depends on which of these two bevel gears it's engaged with if it's engaged with this bevel gear it'll turn one way you can see this bevel gear is turning toward us. If it's engaged in this one, it will turn it the other way. So that's the direction switch. And of course, there's a neutral position right in the middle where it's not driven by either. Okay. So the easiest way to get this on is to get a little oil on this shaft here. Some on these little ears here. Let's slide this in. Okay. We'll put a little, put a little on here. I don't think you can have too much. Remember, I'm a computer geek. I'm not a machinist. So if I'm doing something wrong, please uh, take the time to correct me. Okay, so this is going to slide in like this, and just we're going to spin that around. 
we're just going to engage it into this bevel here for just to hold it in position. Okay, the other side here we have our gear and <clears throat> we have an arm here with a detent. Now, I will probably take this back off later. You know, um, there's a spring in here for this uh, little detent pin and it is compressed. Uh, it needs to be expanded a little bit or my detent needs to be a little bit longer so that it locks into the little notches we have over here. So we'll slide this on. Let's see. There. Yeah. Okay. So it goes over here and then we have a screw. Goes in right here. Get that in there. Like so. And that is that. So this obviously, you know, so it's a neutral position, forward or reverse or whatever it is, you know, depending on how the gears are, neutral. And then um, it's kind of hard to hold this in alignment. The, uh, the uh, lead screw actually holds everything in alignment. Okay, so we got that there. So this is essentially together and can be bolted to the lathe. Uh, again, remember the lead screw just passes through this one here. It's a it's an idle, okay? So, uh, but obviously it'd just fall out if we tried to put it in there. So let me uh, wipe some of this oil off of my hands. Let me reposition the camera, and let's get it installed on the end of the lathe. Okay, so here we are at the uh, headstock of the lathe, and uh, ready to put the gearbox back on. There's uh, two. Um, small bolts here that bolt it to the ways of the bed and uh, this one here we're going to kind of have to get in the hole and slide it over and into position in order to get it in and get these screws started okay All right, so now we're just gonna have to work these down. I don't think there's an easy way to do it other than finagle with them here with an open end wrench. That's assuming that a guy like me can get the wrench started. At least there's a kind of a groove there in the head stock so that you can get a little more turn on the screw head or bolt head. Yeah, that one snug down and that one snug down okay so the uh, the uh, change gear box is uh, back in position where it belongs so the only thing left here to put together sorry about my arm are the uh, bits here that go on the end for the uh, lead screw gear so uh, if you recall we had a, a large uh, heavy washer uh, that goes on the end like that okay and then we have a, uh, a woodruff key it goes right up here get it in there oh it's gonna be stubborn there it went okay and then we have a spacer key out. Let's see here. There it went. Okay. And then of course our gear goes on next. And then um, of course the you know depending on how you set up the change gears and that'll be the next video. Uh, we'll set up this end here. Uh, we'll set it up for three and a half thousandths feed. Uh, thanks uh, very much to um, Jeremy Gag Gagnon uh, for uh, the, the help and the, and the gears and the uh, the spacers that he's given me and then of course you know we have a, a heavy washer that goes on this end and then there's a nut 
that will fasten the gear on. So this end, uh, this portion of the um, gearbox is uh, back together and ready to go. Um, thanks for all your patience. I know it took a little while to get to this. I had to uh, had to wait a little while for my uh, my friend to uh, uh, do that uh, uh, bushing. Now it's not his fault. He's given it back to me for quite some time now, but um, been been busy with work and uh, and some stuff like that. Now the only last thing that I want to cover here real quick in this video is uh, I was asked about what is this toggle switch here on the end. Well on my lathe um, there was no reversing mechanism. It was either on or off and this is the toggle switch that turns it on or off and underneath this plate where the wires are connected it runs down through the headstock um, into the bed and then out the back uh, to where the motors are wired. And um, uh, when when we go to fire it up, I'll, I'll show you back there because it's that that stuff is just kind of wire nutted together right now and it's not really in the box and ready to go. Um, but we'll I'll cover more of that. But anyway, that to answer uh, to answer that user's question, uh, this is just a power on off switch. Like I said, this uh, this lathe was not uh, uh, did not come with a reversing drum, uh, you know, to reverse the. Um, the uh, headstock and probably the reason you know these are threaded the headstock uh, spindle is threaded and reversing it with a heavy chuck on there could cause it to unspin or you know to unwind and come off and, and injure yourself dam damage the the lathe or or whatever so anyway look I'm gonna stop right there uh, the next one we'll get the banjo back on and we'll get it the uh, we'll get it geared up for uh, three and a half thousandths feed um, want to give a little shout out to Chris uh, Anderson he uh, put a little video on on uh, um, gearing up his lathe for I think for the same same feed but I think he had an issue with uh, uh, not having gears wide enough or gears too wide or something like that I can't remember I'd have to go back and look so anyway uh, big thanks to uh, Chris for taking the time to show that to us uh, thank you for uh, following along with uh, my lathe uh, uh, rebuild and clean up and uh, or uh, we're getting further along uh, when we finish the uh, gears on this end here uh, we're going to take a look at the saddle now the saddle has got some uh, worn parts um, and uh, I'll, sh I'll show those uh, but I have uh, found a couple of the replacement parts on Feebay as um, <laughs> many of us call it you know our favorite uh, auction website and uh, so hopefully um, uh, once we tear into that, maybe there wouldn't be too much more wrong with it than that, but we'll we'll see. So again, thanks. Uh, thank you for my new subscribers. Gotten several new subscribers. I appreciate you uh, your 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 patronage and your your you know taking the time to visit uh, my heap. Um, again, if you want to take a look at my website, there's a bunch of other stuff there that's uh, either machine or not machine or molding or casting related and that sort of stuff. There might be something there that you might want to while a few minutes away. Um, any questions, uh, feel free to put them down below uh, this video, or uh, you can go to myheap.com, hit the contact link, menu link at the top, and you can send me an email. So other than that, um, have a blessed day.